Hello there, I'm Aldra Hill and welcome to a guide for how to play as Alfonso, King of Leon. Alfonso is a really great start in CK3 for those looking to learn a little bit more about intrigue and how to actually try and unite a disparate realm. Before we get started, if these kind of guides and similar videos are interesting to you, please let me know by leaving a comment down below. And if you want to see more, leaving a like and hitting that subscribe button is the best way to do so. So, Alfonso. Historically speaking, Alfonso actually lost the wars against his brother for Spain, but he ended up being king at the end thanks to a few carefully placed murders and assassinations. In-game, Alfonso is very much true to life. He is deceitful, as well as being cynical, with the best intrigue education trait. He is an excellent murderer, as well as starting out with the richest parts of Catholic Spain, the Kingdom of Leon. The key to getting very strong very quickly as Alfonso is through murder. As soon as you get started, pick the Skullduggery lifestyle focus for him to improve your intrigue even more and get some more agent acceptance. If you are crazy lucky, you might already have points in the schema tree, maybe even getting you the swift execution trait, giving your murder plots a plus 30% chance to succeed. Secondly, immediately move your sister, Urika, who for some reason is also your lover, oh CK3, never change, into the position of Spymaster if she isn't already. The game seems to randomize what role she is actually in, so she might be your steward or maybe already your spy master, but regardless, make sure she's there straight away. Her 20 or so intrigue will do wonders for your assassination attempts. Move her focus to support schemes once you've given her her job. Next, marry yourself to whichever one of your cousins in the Kingdom of Aragon has the best stats. Your choices are between Infanta Urica Ramirez of Aragon and Infanta Sancha. While they are your cousins, they also come with a claim on the Kingdom of Aragon which you're going to want eventually so as to be able to tie together all of Spain later on. If you choose to marry Sancha, make sure that you remember to negotiate an alliance with the King of Aragon separately, because her initial alliance is actually tied to a lowly count, her father. It's especially important to do this because otherwise Aragon will completely fall apart due to Muslim attacks in the south, and you really do want to keep a Catholic Aragon in place. After that, it's murdering time. Immediately start planning your brother's murder, and then unpause. Any agents that can join should start to, but you might need to go through the invite section and find those that can be convinced. Pay them their bribes or whatever they need to get them help you murdering. If there is anyone that you cannot completely afford to bribe but are really close to acceptance level, just go ahead and start a scheme to sway them. Don't worry, you can always have one personal and one hostile scheme at the same time. The key is to wait until your murder fires before doing anything aggressive elsewhere. You need the lands of Castile to get strong later. If your murder scheme is ever discovered, there really is little else you can do other than restart. I know, it's not ideal, but so much of playing Leon revolves around this as you cannot beat your brother in warfare, especially because he has the legendary El Cid under his command. The best thing, instead, is to wait for that murder. If he happens to get lucky and have a child in that time, you can either restart or begin planning for the next murder as well. Once you have killed your brother, and trust me, you will eventually, the only thing left to do is to plan the murder for the next one. Start a plot to kill the King of Galicia, your other brother, and get even more of your rightful lands back. While you're waiting though, if you want something, or rather someone, a bit fun, head next to the date at the bottom right of your screen and click more and then find character. Search for Vivar, V-I-V-A-R, and change the relation to all. And there you go, El Cid. Rodrigo Diguez de Vivar, a total badass. Except of course he won't actually accept an invite to court, so what can you do? Just offer your cousin's hand in marriage to him and he'll come straight to your court. From there, you can immediately grant him two provinces that you inherited from your brother, making him a powerful vassal you can one day grant a dukedom to. Duke Rodrigo de Vivar of Castile has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Make sure you don't forget to make him marshal as well. Now, just wait for the murder once again of Galicia and inherit his lands. To tidy everything up, declare war on Navarra for your claims once you've inherited everything, as this will give you plenty of extra manpower and land. Don't forget to remember to be hiring men-at-arms. As a Spaniard, your cabarellos are great in both flatland and hills, making them perfect for countering their levies, and also making sure every win crushes their armies completely thanks to the better chasing ability. Once done, you can consider a unique decision in Liberia. Unite the Spanish thrones. It gives you a boatload of prestige, moves you to high crown authority, meaning you can revoke titles, and destroys all other Spanish kingdom titles. But you don't have to do this. This is really only necessary if you have multiple sons all clamoring for titles. If you can manage to only have one heir and ensure you don't lose all the Spanish titles at once, it's actually beneficial to wait until you can get even more kingdom rank titles. For example, wait until you can press your eventual heir's claim to Aragon through his mother. 
This will ensure you can combine both Aragon and Spanish titles, destroying them both and making one united crown. Or you can just wait until the Muslim nations have fought amongst themselves for long enough and formed a brand new Muslim kingdom title. You might be able to invade for their kingdom using a holy war and thus not have to deal with the extra title. So now it should be no later than about 1072 and you'll own almost half of Iberia. You'll be rich, powerful, have numerous vassals alongside a guaranteed claim for your heir to press in the future. The best thing to do after this is to save up money for a pilgrimage as this will net you a lot of piety. Use this piety to fight ducal holy wars and expand your reach into Iberia one dukedom at a time. Where do you go from here? Well, that's up to you. Maybe you want to be a crusader, fighting for Christendom and installing a member of your dynasty over Jerusalem. Or maybe you want to finish uniting Iberia and form the Empire of Hispania. Or maybe you just want to play the dynasty game and try to spread your glorious Jumena dynasty far and wide. I hope you have a great time figuring it out. I really hope this guide was helpful, and if it was, do be sure to leave a like below and subscribe for more CK3 guides and tons of other videos like this. I was Aldrahil, and I will continue to be. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.